Hi guys, this is Cambridge IGCSE Chemistry, February March 2020, Paper 6. Question 1. The table gives the boiling points of four alcohols. We see four different boiling points here. The apparatus shown can be used to separate the mixture of the four alcohols shown in the table. Okay, looks like a setup for fractional distillation. Part A. Name the apparatus labeled A and B. A is the stick, it's a thermometer. And B is the one that contains mixture of alcohols. It's not a beaker, it's a flask. Or you can also say round bottom flask. Part B. Add to the diagram one arrow to show where water enters the condenser. It's not indicated in the diagram that water is supposed to go through the condenser, but water is supposed to enter the condenser through this bottom entry and leave the condenser with this top entry. So just leave an arrow here. Part C. Why is it not safe to heat the mixture of alcohols with a Bunsen burner? Well, in the diagram, it's shown that they're gonna directly hit the mixture of alcohols, but we don't do this in real life. It's extremely dangerous because alcohols are highly flammable and it can catch a fire. So it's not safe to do that because alcohols are flammable. So just how the mixture of alcohols can be heated safely. Instead of directly heating this mixture, what we usually do is place it in a water bath. So it's like a container containing water. It prevents exposing the alcohols directly under hot temperature. So you're going to heat up the water first and then this water is going to heat up the mixture of alcohols. Part D. Describe how the condenser allows the alcohol to be collected as a liquid. Well, if you start heating up the alcohol over here, it's going to start evaporating and travel through these as a gas molecule. But as it goes through the condenser, this condenser cools down the gas molecules and when it's collected here, they're collected as liquid. In other words, the condenser cools the vapor and allows the alcohol to be collected as liquid. Part D. Which alcohol will be collected first? Explain your answer. This fractional distillation works because these alcohols are all in different boiling points. And if your boiling point is lower, it's going to start boiling faster than the rest of the alcohols and will be collected first. So the answer is methanol because its boiling point is the lowest. Question 2. A student investigated the time taken to collect 40 cm cube of hydrogen gas when magnesium reacts with dilute sulfuric acid. So they're going to put magnesium inside dilute sulfuric acid, which is here, and measure the time taken to collect 40 cm cube of hydrogen gas through this apparatus. Experiment 1. Using a measuring cylinder, 8 cm cube of dilute sulfuric acid was poured into the boiling tube. Using a second measuring cylinder, 12 cm cube of distilled water was added to the acid in the boiling tube. The apparatus was set up as shown in the diagram, ensuring the inverted measuring cylinder was full of water. The bung was removed from the boiling tube. A coiled length of magnesium ribbon was added to the boiling tube. The bung was immediately replaced and a timer started. The time taken for 40 cm cube of gas to be collected was measured. The student felt the outside of the boiling tube, so they didn't take an accurate measurement of the temperature, they just took note that there was an increase in temperature. Part day, the student noticed that the boiling tube was warm. What does this tell you about the type of reaction? So what's the name of a reaction that releases heat? It's an exothermic reaction. Describe one change that could be made to the apparatus to help keep the temperature of the contents of the boiling tube constant during the reaction. Now, they're not asking how you're going to measure the temperature. You just need to think of a method to keep it constant. And when you want to keep the temperature constant in an experiment, we use a water bath. So we can just place a water bath around this boiling tube. So dilute sulfuric acid and magnesium will be exposed to constant temperature. Experiment 2. The boiling tube was rinsed out with distilled water. Experiment 1 was repeated using 10 cm cube of dilute sulfuric acid and 10 cm cube of distilled water. Alright, they changed the volumes of dilute sulfuric acid and distilled water. Next it was 12 and 8, then 16, 4, and 20, and no distilled water. The rest are the same. 
Part B, use the information in the description of the experiments and the timer diagrams to complete the table. Record the time in seconds. So the volume of distilled water, it was 12 at first, then 10, 8, 4, 0. Then the time to collect 40 centimeter cube of gas, we just need to read the timer diagram. All right, nothing very confusing. The inner circle represents the minutes. The needle is pointing to one, so it's one minute. And for seconds, it's at 12. So this is one minute, 12 seconds, but it's in seconds. So we convert it to 72 seconds. Then this needle is pointing to zero, so this is zero minute. And seconds is in 45, so 45 seconds. And then zero minute again, this is 33 seconds, so 33. Then zero minute, 23 here, so 23 seconds. Zero minute again, and 16 seconds. Part C, add a suitable scale to the y-axis and plot the results from experiments one to five on the grid. Draw a smooth line graph. Okay, they've already told us which one goes to which axis. We just need to form the scale for y-axis. The range of y-axis, which is up to 72 from 16. And we have one, two, three, four, five big squares. Well, I just put it as from 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100. And then you plot the graph and draw a best fit line. From your graph, did you use the time taken to collect 40 cm cube of gas if the experiment was repeated using 9 cm cube of dilute sulfuric acid? So find the point where it's 9 cm cube of dilute sulfuric acid, it's here, and then you just draw a straight line until you meet your graph. It's around 56 for me, and it's in the mark scheme that your answer should be within 54 to 56 seconds. So make sure you draw your graph accurately. What volume of distilled water would be needed if the experiment was repeated using 9 cm cube of dilute sulfuric acid? Have you noticed something? If you add up the volume of distilled water and sulfuric acid, everything just adds up to 20. So if we are adding 9 cm cube of sulfuric acid, we will need 11 cm cube of distilled water. Part D. The rate of reaction can be calculated using the equation shown. Rate of reaction equals to volume of gas divided by time taken. Use this equation to calculate the rate of reaction in experiment 1. Give the units for the rate of reaction you have calculated. While the volume of gas collected is always the same, they said it's 40 cm cube. Then the time taken for experiment 1 is 72. So 40 divided by 72. It's 0 0.56, correct to 2SF. And the unit, well, for volume, it's centimeter cube. For time, it's seconds, so it's centimeter cube per second. In which experiment 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 was the rate of reaction greatest? Since the volume of gas remains constant, it's just 40. Well, if you divide it with the smallest number, you will get the biggest rate of reaction as your answer. So look for the experiment that took the shortest time. And anyway, if you take the shortest time to reach the same result, it means that the rate is the fastest. From our table, experiment 5 took the shortest time. Part F. Why would measuring the volume of dilute sulfuric acid with a burette rather than a measuring cylinder be an improvement? Because burettes are more accurate than measuring cylinders. The magnesium starts to react with the dilute sulfuric acid as soon as it is added. Why does this decrease the accuracy of the investigation? We need to go back to the method. You remove the bung, and then you put the ribbon, and then you put back the bung. Well, maybe this might be just a few seconds, but right after you put the magnesium ribbon inside, you're not gonna close the bung immediately, and there will be this gap between them and hydrogen gas may escape during this gap so it's not that accurate so your answer would be that gas can escape or not all gas is collected because you need to put in the bung first 
Describe one improvement that you can make to overcome this problem. You can get this question correct as long as it makes sense. One method you can use is when there is a boiling tube here, you can tie the magnesium on thread, have your bong ready over here, and as soon as you just let the thread drop into the sulfuric acid, you can immediately close the boiling tube. Solution J and solid K were analyzed. Universal indicator paper was dipped into the first portion of solution J. The universal indicator paper turned red. Oh, if it's red, it means it's very acidic, probably like pH 1. Test 2. A spatula measure of sodium carbonate was added to the second portion of solution J. The gas given above was tested. Effervescence was seen. The gas produced turned lime water milky. If there was effervescence and lime water turned milky, it means that carbon dioxide was present, which was probably from sodium carbonate. This method is often used to test for the presence of carbonate ions after adding dilute hydrochloric acid. So it means that hydrochloric acid was present in test 2. Okay, test 3, 1 cm cube of dilute nitric acid and a few drops of aqua silver nitrate were added to the third portion of solution J. A white precipitate formed. Okay, adding this to, this is a test for halide ions, Cl-, Br-, and I-. If the result is a white precipitate, it means that chloride ions are present. Part A. Use the observation from test 1 to suggest the pH of solution J. pH, like I just said, it should be pH 1. Part B. Name the gas given off in test 2. It's carbon dioxide. Part C. Identify solution J. We found it out from test 2 that it's hydrochloric acid. Solid K was ammonium nitrate. Complete the expected observations. Solid K was dissolved in water to produce solution K. Solution K was divided into two equal portions. Part D, about 1 cm cube of dilute nitric acid and a few drops of aqueous barium nitrate were added to the first portion of solution K. Again, this is a test for halide ions, which are Cl-, Br-, or I-, but neither ammonium nor nitrate are halide ions. Therefore, for observations, you'll see no change. Part D. 2 cm cube of aqueous sodium hydroxide was added to the second portion of solution K. The mixture was warmed and the gas given off was tested. If you add sodium hydroxide to ammonium nitrate and warm it, ammonia gas will be produced. And although they didn't specify how they're going to test it, they're going to use red litmus paper to test it. And since ammonia gas is a basic substance, the red litmus paper will turn blue. Question 4. A black dye can be obtained from some plant roots. Plan an investigation to determine how many different colored substances are contained in a black dye obtained from plant roots. Roots. If you see this, how many different colored substances and a dye, it means that you need to carry out chromatography. You must include how the results you obtain will tell you how many different colored substances are contained in the black dye. You have access to plant roots and all normal laboratory apparatus. Now we have this long space and you only get 6 marks by just describing the process of chromatography. You'll probably just get 3 marks for the entire process of chromatography. Well, surprisingly, what's important in this question is how you're gonna take a black dye from the plant roots. Because these plant roots don't just give black dye to you, you have to extract it. So the way you do is, you have to crush this using pestle and mortar. These are the pestle and the mortar. I'm sure you guys have seen this in science labs. So you put your plant roots in this equipment, add some water, crush it, extract the liquid, then you drop the liquid on the chromatography paper, carry out chromatography, and now you explain how you're going to do your chromatography. So the bottom of the paper, draw a line, a baseline, you put the black dye, and you place this chromatography paper in a container with a solvent. You can just write water, then the substances will start traveling upwards, making dots on the way. 
And to answer the last question, the most important on how you are going to use the results to tell how many different substances are in this dye, you count the number of spots on the chromatography paper. It's not really hard when you know the answer, but you can easily leave out the part about crushing the root using this pestle and stuff. So it's important to try out as many past papers as possible. That's it for this paper. I think this paper was not very challenging. Let me know how you found this paper. Subscribe to get ready for your IGCSE exams. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and God bless you guys. Bye.